Hi, and welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Kriptenia. Today, I would like to share with you some tips for getting hotels here in Russia. First, let's talk about Moscow. Moscow is a big business center here in Russia. And if you want to stay at a hotel in Moscow, it's best to do it on the weekend if you're looking to save a little bit of money. From Friday to Monday, the hotels are free of businessmen and so are pretty empty and a better deal for the tourist. During the week, however, they're quite full up with business people and much more expensive. So if you're looking to save a dollar, it's better to do it on the weekend in Moscow. Now, of course, we live here in St. Petersburg, and St. Petersburg works a little bit differently. In St. Petersburg, during the summer, we have a wonderful period called White Nights, when it doesn't really get very dark in the evenings. However, this is the time of high tourist season. In May and July, it's much cheaper than in June, which is the most expensive time of the year to come. Now, of course, if you're looking for a time when there are fewer tourists and less people in front of you at the museum or less lines to stand in, it's much better to come either in the fall or perhaps early spring. And if you really like snow and cold weather, you could always come in the winter. Hi, and welcome once again to Zaravin's Russian Survival Guide. I'm your host, Maya Kryptinia, here today at the beautiful historic Astoria Hotel in the center of St. Petersburg, right on St. Isaac's Ploshit. This historic hotel was opened in 1912. Since then, many famous guests have been here, whether they're politicians or artists or actors. The story has 169 rooms, from your standard room all the way up to a czar's suite. Here in the Astoria Hotel, there's also a beautiful Astoria restaurant where you can enjoy your breakfast and then during the day have lunch or dinner here. Here we are within the beautiful winter ballroom of the Astoria Hotel. You can see around me this glorious space would be a wonderful place to hold a conference or perhaps a wedding. And in fact, legend has it that during the Second World War, Hitler decided to have his special victory party here. Of course, thank goodness, that didn't come to pass. In this beautiful space, when the Astoria opened, here was the first French restaurant in St. Petersburg. And then during the Soviet period, this was where the main restaurant of the hotel was. Now the Winter Garden can be used as a special space to hold your banquet, a wedding, or a conference. Here we are in the ballroom of the Astoria Hotel. As you can see, it's set up perfectly for a conference. Here, with theater-style seating, you can seat up to 250 people. The room can also be used as a ballroom for dancing and having a dinner party as well. Currently, we're sitting in a junior suite. The interior design of these rooms is really kind of interesting. The sister of Sir Roccoforte is in charge of designing the rooms. Here you'll find a combination of interesting Russian things, such as beautiful linen for the curtains, pictures of ballerinas, and also some very British touches as well. Here we are in one of five of the presidential suites. They're all named after Russian composers. For example, Stravinsky, Prokofiev, Tchaikovsky, Rimsky-Korsakov, and Rachmaninoff. In this beautiful arrangement of rooms that wraps around the side of the building, you have a guest room and bathroom, a dining room, a sitting room, a master bedroom, and a master bath. From this suite of rooms, you have a beautiful view onto St. Isaac's Square and the center of historic St. Petersburg. Within these comfortable rooms, you'll find a beautiful combination of both classical and modern design. The Astoria Hotel is located perfectly for people who want to be next to all the action, but not right in the middle of it. You are just a few steps away from all the historical sites in St. Petersburg without being in the hectic crowds. 
If you're interested in history, beauty, a combination of modern and classic, then the Astoria Hotel here in St. Petersburg is the right place for you. Hi, and welcome once again to Zara Vince Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Krivchenya, here at the Angleterre, a wonderful hotel right on Isakovsky Square. This historic piece of land has had several lives. The hotel that we have here today was rebuilt in 1991. This hotel has 192 rooms, two steps from Sakovsky Cathedral, and just around the corner from the Hermitage and other wonderful places to see in St. Petersburg. Here at the Angleterre, they love to present artworks. They often have exhibitions of artists that change monthly. This is a wonderful superior deluxe room in the Angleterre Hotel. In fact, this room has a beautiful view onto St. Isaac's Square. Although the Angleterre is a historic hotel, the building itself that we're in today has actually been rebuilt from the ground up, saving just the facade of the building. Each of these rooms is about the same size. You'll notice that the design in this room uses a combination of both Russian and British elements. This is an example of one of the luxe rooms at the Angleterre Hotel. As you can see, this room has a beautiful, maybe even one of the best views of St. Isaac's Cathedral here in St. Petersburg. This is the beautiful Italian restaurant Barcelino. Here you can enjoy a delicious breakfast, or perhaps later in the day, lunch and dinner. One of the really cool things about the Angleterre is inside the hotel is a film theater. Here you can see documentary films, art films, and they're all in the original language. This is one of five conference halls here at the Angleterre Hotel. It can also be set up as an art gallery. If you're looking for a wonderful four-star hotel experience here in the heart of St. Petersburg, then the Angleterre is a wonderful hotel for you. Welcome once again to Zara Vint's Russian Survival Guide. I'm your hostess, Maya Krivchenya, your American mezzo-soprano. Today we are in So Sofitel, St. Petersburg. Just next door is the Sakersky Pluoshet and St. Isaac's Cathedral. On the outside, you see a historic building, but it opens up like a Fabergé egg, and inside you see something new and modern, hip, cool and forward thinking. This hotel's idea is basically art, fashion and DJs. On the lobby walls you'll find new art, modern art, from artists of St. Petersburg here every week a new exposition. Here you can also see fashion shows, meetings of people who are famous and doing new and great and exciting things in St. Petersburg. Here we are 
on the rooftop of So Sofortel San Petersburg. You can see behind me St. Isaac's Cathedral and all around St. Isaac's Square. You see the rooftops of this beautiful city. Here is one of the coolest places to be in the summer evenings in St. Petersburg. Every night a DJ, every evening a party. We're now inside one of the numbers at the So So Hotel St. Petersburg. If you notice, inside this beautiful historical building, we have a modern style room. Here we have ideas taken from Fabergé, such as the doorways and this beautiful lamp. Of course, this is an older building, but inside you have all the comforts of a modern, forward-thinking hotel. Here we have rooms from standard all the way up to a presidential suite, depending on your needs and what you're looking for in a hotel room. Here we are in the famous restaurant Coco Co, where you can have a delicious breakfast every morning while you're staying here at So So Hotel St. Petersburg. If you're looking for a fashionable, hip, forward-thinking hotel to stay at while you're in St. Petersburg, so So Hotel St. Petersburg is the place for you. Hi, and welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Krivchenko, your host here today in Dominic Hotel. This very unique and exciting hotel is based on Italian designers. Here in this dark and gray city, you'll have a room full of colors, a lobby full of light, and a very exciting place to enjoy your holiday. This five-star hotel is ideally placed in the center of the city, just a few steps away from St. Isaac's Cathedral and St. Isaac's Square. Located on the canal, Moika, you're just right in the middle where you can enjoy everything around you, the old city, but just far enough away to have some peace and quiet too. One of the unique things about Hotel Domina is that every month there is a new exhibition of a local artist here within the corridor of the hotel. Here we are inside the beautiful bar Nove. This bar is a conception of an Italian designer's idea of Dostoevsky. In fact, here's Dostoevsky right beside me. And behind me, his famous lady, Martha from Crime and Punishment. In fact, here we have the head of the designer himself. Here we are in Arca Ballela, the beautiful Mediterranean Italian style restaurant within the Hotel Domina. This restaurant can hold up to 60 people for your corporate party. Here we are in the lifestyle suite. You'll notice that it's two stories. The first story green and the second story a nice purple color. One of the unique things about Domina Hotel is that every floor is a different color and each room coordinates with that floor. Some of the rooms in this hotel have a beautiful view looking out onto the Moika River. Here we are in one of Domina's superior rooms. The rooms here in Domina Hotel range from 20 square meters to 32 square meters. One of the unique things about Domina is that you can order pillows to your liking. Whether you want soft or hard, feathers or natural fibers, Domino Hotel can give you the perfect night's rest. If you're looking for a bright, artistic, fun place to stay here in the middle of St. Petersburg, then Domina is the hotel for you.
and welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide with Zara Vince. I'm Maya Kovchenya, here today to show you Lotte Hotel in the center of St. Petersburg. This new hotel was opened in 2018 on a very historic site. In this historic place, many famous people have lived. John Quincy Adams, the sixth president of the United States, stayed in this building, and also many writers such as Gogol also have been here. That was, of course, in the original building. This building has been completely redone from the inside out, leaving only the facade of the original. You may wonder where the name Lotte comes from. The founder and creator of this hotel chain was in love with the story of The Sorrows of Young Werther by Goethe. The main heroine of this book is named Charlotte, and of course her short name is called Lotte. The owner and creator of this Lotte Empire, which began with chocolate in Korea, also moved on to real estate and now has over 30 hotels in the world with four here in Russia. Lotte Hotel St. Petersburg has more than 150 rooms of varying sizes and amenities. One will certainly fit your needs. Here we are in one of Lotte's standard rooms. You'll find a more modern design with clean lines but still the beautiful views of the city and a very comfortable place to stay. We are now in the presidential suite. This is one of the most luxurious presidential suites in all of St. Petersburg. Here there are 200 square meters where you can enjoy views of Usakovsky Square in this suite, you'll find a beautiful mix of modern and classic style. All the lights and technology work with a control panel. You can relax on comfortable couches surrounding a beautiful fireplace. Here we are in the master suite, a beautiful combination of classic design and modern technology. From this bedroom, you have the best view of St. Isaac's Square. Here we are at the bar restaurant El Terrassa at Lotte Hotel here in St. Petersburg. Behind me you see the beautiful St. Isaac's Cathedral and St. Isaac's Plochet and St. Isaac's Square. While up here you can enjoy a wonderful meal, a cocktail. Here you can have a wonderful celebratory check-in at the Lotte Hotel. We are now in Megumi, the Japanese restaurant inside the Lotte Hotel. Megumi is one of the top tier restaurants here in St. Petersburg. Not only can you choose from over 20 different kinds of sake, you can also pick fresh seafood from their aquarium to decide exactly which one you want to eat. Megumi can be a wonderful addition to otherwise traditional Russian cuisine here in St. Petersburg. Here we are in the atrium of Lotte Hotel. Behind me you see the lounge. Here you can have breakfast or all day long they serve an a la carte menu. This space can also be rented for parties and events and can hold up to 200 people. You'll notice that the decor is quite lovely, has lilies in the stained glass and psyche in the center of the hall. Lotte Hotel is the perfect combination of 20th century technology and the historical center of St. Petersburg. Here your vacation can be modern and fresh, but you can enjoy the surroundings of a beautiful city at the same time. Allow Zara events to make your event here at Lotte Hotel a special one. Hi, and welcome to Zara Vince Russian Survival Guide. I'm your host, Maya Krivchenya, here today at the Stroganov Palace. Here we are at Stroganov's Palace. It's the place where he lived and where the famous dish, Beef Stroganov, was created. The restaurant here is called Russian Empire, and inside you will find beautiful, very extravagant decor and interior for your event. You'll notice these exquisite plates on the table. 
They were designed by the famous designer Versace. They were made to sort of reflect the same design that you see here on the ceiling. You'll notice these beautiful candlesticks on the table. They're quite exquisite and they're made from the Stroganoff factory. His family made these and now somebody goes around the world trying to find authentic pieces that were once held by the Stroganoff family. You'll notice the opulence of these rooms. They were reconstructed to look like they did in Stroganoff's time. Beautiful paintings on the ceiling, extravagant furniture and fabrics, and wonderful candelabras on the walls. Here in this sort of pink red room, you can seat about 45 people for your event. You'll see behind me a picture of the Graf Stroganoff. Now, if you come to this wonderful restaurant Ampere, you will get to try the original recipe of beef stroganoff, which may not be exactly as you expect. Here at the restaurant Ampere, in the Stroganoff Palace, Tsar events can create for you a beautiful gala evening. And included in that evening, they can also take you to some secret rooms beneath the restaurant. Hi, and welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide by Zara Vince. I'm Maya Krivchenya, your American host, here to show you the secrets beneath the Stroganoff Palace. Here we are beneath the restaurant Ampere in their wine cellar. They have one of the best wine cellars in all of Europe, with many different kinds of wines for you to choose from to make your party even more special. Now, Stroganoff lived in this palace. And not only did he enjoy wine, but perhaps he also had a secret life for himself. In the cellar of Stroganoff's palace, they found many secret rooms. Here, you'll find a small room where you could have a tea party or perhaps, you know, smoke some cigars with your friends, if you so wish. Perhaps you're wondering why Count Stroganoff had so many secret rooms. Legend has it that Stroganoff was head of a Masonic Lodge and he needed someplace secret to hold his meetings. So here you have it, beneath his palace in the wine cellar. There can be more than one reason to have secret rooms. For example, Stroganoff was known to have very many mistresses. Come with me and I'll show you another one of his secret places. Here, Stroganoff could meet with his mistresses without anybody bothering him. They even had their own entrance into the cellar. Tsar events can create a very interesting evening for you here under the palace Stroganoff. You can have in the wine cellar perhaps an aperitif or a digestif before or after your dinner. If you choose to have a welcoming cocktail here in the cellar, Zara Vince can also add some entertainment. Perhaps a singer or an instrumentalist, a child prodigy even, could be here just for you. Hi, and welcome once again to Zara Vint's Russian Survival Guide. I'm your hostess, Maya Krivchenya, your American opera singer, 
here in the great restaurant Coco Co. This restaurant is a conceptual idea of Matilda Schnurba, a St. Petersburg fashion icon. This restaurant is extremely interesting because it takes the idea of farm to table before it was ever cool in St. Petersburg. Here, they serve not only Russian cuisine, but Russian cuisine with a modern twist. This is one of the most popular restaurants in St. Petersburg right now. It's very difficult to get a table, and without a reservation, nearly impossible. Now, the idea of this restaurant was one of the first, this farm to table, modern Russian cuisine. Now, all over the city, people are trying to copy the idea. You'll notice that the decor of the restaurant has to do with Russian fairy tales. You see beautiful foxes and birds painted on the walls, a mirror to remind us of Snow White, and feather covered lamps to remind us of the Coco Co. Coco Co is located in So So Hotel, St. Petersburg. It's a beautiful combination of modern food, modern ideas, and a modern hotel. Welcome once again to Czar Events Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Kripchenna, your American soprano, here as your hostess to present you with the wonderful Event Center Gymnasium. Gymnasium was originally part of Nikolai Nikolaevich's palace, which was then called Truda Palace. Then it became a gymnasium for young women or a secondary school. After which it again became just a regular sports hall or gymnasium. Then in the Perestroika period, a bakery. And today it is a beautiful and historic venue where you can hold any of your gala events, meetings or concerts, anything you can imagine, you can have it happen here. Gymnasium has many different halls for you to use during your event. Some are smaller, such as this lovely hall, where you can have an intimate cocktail, or you may enjoy the Grand Colonnade, where we can seat up to 250 people. Czar Events is ready to help you prepare and have a very successful event. I'm Maya Kripchenia here once again for Russian Survival Guide at a new and exciting restaurant, a Russian tapas bar called Petrov Vodkin. Petrov Vodkin was one of the Russian avant-garde painters of the 20th century. One of his most famous paintings, the subject, is a red horse, the theme which you will see throughout the restaurant. Vodkin is a wonderful restaurant for small groups. It has three separate halls, each which can hold 30 patrons. This restaurant is a wonderful place to enjoy lunch or dinner, and it's just a stone's throw away from the Hermitage and right by Nevsky Prospekt. Tsar Events will gladly organize an intimate dinner for you here in Petrov Vodkin restaurant.
welcome once again to Zara Vint's Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Krivchenya, your American singer, here as your hostess today. We are in a charming and cute new restaurant here in St. Petersburg called Petrusha. Why Petrusha? Well, that was actually the diminutive form of Peter the Great's name. At Petrusha, you can have a wonderful luncheon or dinner with a more casual style. Here, they serve great Russian traditional dishes. Petrusha has three different halls. In this beautiful blue hall, you can seat about 40 people. Petrusha also offers you the opportunity to take part in master classes. If you like cooking, you can learn how to make Russian pelmeni, and if you're interested in vodka, you can learn how to make it yourself and all the ingredients and different variants in making it. In this room, you can have about 50 guests. At Petrusha, not only can you have a wonderful Russian meal, but you can also learn about Russian cooking traditions and vodka traditions. Let Zara Vince help you create a wonderful event in this exciting new restaurant. And welcome once again to Zara Vint's Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Krivchenya, your American singer, here to present you with another wonderful venue. Here at the Russian Vodka Room number one, you can have an exciting adventure, not just with vodka and food, but you can also learn about the history of vodka while you're here. The Russian Vodka Room is connected with the Russian Vodka Museum. Here you can learn about the history of Russian vodka and after your tour you go to a nice little bar where you can try over 200 different kinds of vodka, some infused with different flavors and all sorts of different styles. As you can see some of the types here on the wall. After your tour and Russian vodka tasting, we recommend that you bring your group here to this lovely room where you can have an event of up to 100 people. Here you can enjoy wonderful historical dishes with the actual historical recipes of Russian food. As you notice, the room is decorated in the style of the early 20th century. Here you have a lovely ambiance, a feeling of family and traditional food. If your group happens to be a little bit smaller, there is also a smaller space for you to use here in this room. However, remember, the Russian vodka room number one is also very popular with Russian people, so you must plan in advance. If you love Russian vodka or are interested in trying Russian dishes, then Russian vodka room number one and the Russian vodka museum are the places for you to hold your event. Remember, we have some clips already out there about Russian vodka and how it's made and delicious dishes from the Russian cuisine. Czar Events can create for you here a wonderful event filled with Russian food and Russian vodka at the Russian Vodka Room number one. Hi, and welcome once again to Zara Vint's Russian Survival Guide. I'm your host, Maya Krivchenya, here at a wonderful, charming restaurant called Sadko. As 
that quote was the name of an opera by Rimsky-Korsakov. It's also a famous fairy tale, and from that fairy tale comes the name of this charming restaurant. Here inside, you'll find wonderful cuisine based on Russian traditional recipes. You'll notice that the design of the restaurant is very, very specific to sort of Russian style. On this ceiling, you'll find beautiful flowers painted and beautiful chandeliers made of red Murano glass. On the tables, you'll find beautiful place settings that are made specifically for the restaurant. They're done in the specific design and style just for Sadko. Here in this hall, you can seat between 145 and 150 people. You can enjoy an a la carte menu or even have a special buffet. Another benefit of the restaurant Sadko is that its servers are students from the conservatory, so you can also have an impromptu concert during your dinner. If you're interested in Russian cuisine with this unique atmosphere and live music, we'll hope you enjoy a time here at Sadko. Hi, I'm Maya Krivchenin and I'd like to welcome you once again to Russian Survival Guide by Zara Vents. I would like to show you one of the secret treasures of St. Petersburg. Follow me and I'll show you this secret place. We're now on top of St. Petersburg in a newly opened bar called Sky and Wine. From here, you can see the tops of many famous buildings around St. Petersburg, from the cathedral behind me, Izakovsky Sabor, to Kazansky Sabor, and even Dalsha Nikolsky Sabor. Here's a beautiful place to enjoy your evening or a sunny afternoon. If you couldn't guess by the name, Sky and Wine, this is of course a wine bar. Here you can enjoy hundreds of different kinds of wine. It's a beautiful place to have a wine tasting. Zara Vince recommends this wine bar as a great place to have small groups for lunch or dinner, or you can even use it as part of a scavenger hunt. Sky and Wine is a wonderful place to stop by, enjoy the view, and a lovely glass of wine. Welcome once again to Zara Vint's Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Krivchenia, your American singer, here to present you with a wonderful venue for your event. We are at Stroganov Steakhouse today, the first American-style steakhouse in Russia. Here you can get your favorite steak or even try their famous beef stroganoff. Here you can get delicious imported beef from Argentina, Japan, and also from Russia itself, from cities of Bransk and Voronezh. Stroganov Steakhouse is actually the largest steakhouse not only in Russia, but in all of Europe. Here they can accommodate a party of up to 350 people using four separate rooms. Or you can break the space into smaller groups of about 120 each. Stroganov Steakhouse is located in the old army barracks and stables of the Emperor's army. It's just a stone's throw away from Izakovsky Cathedral and the Neva. 
On the walls, you'll find photos of pre-revolutionary St. Petersburg, along with advertisements and even trinkets and things that were found when they were doing a reconstruction of the building. Here, you are surrounded by interesting history. Here's an example of one of the smaller halls that you could use for your event. A comfortable banquet to sit on and a large table filled with delicious food for you to eat. Here in this hall, we can seat 120 people. And in this other hall, as well, 120. If you combine all four halls, you can have about 350 people here at your event. Not only can we feed you, but we can also host your conference here, have a buffet on one side, and your meeting on the other. If you're in Russia and looking for a delicious steak, Stroganoff Steakhouse is where to get it. And if you want to have your event here, SAR Events will help you create a most wonderful experience. and welcome once again to Tsar Events Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Krivchenya. I would like to show you Yeliseev's Emporium. Yeliseev was originally a serf who presented his masters with a surprise of raspberries in the middle of winter. His master was so shocked that he promised to give him anything he wanted. So what did he ask for? He asked for his freedom. His master presented him with his freedom and a small fortune and he began his own emporium. The front display window of the Emporium has a beautiful art installation by the famous Russian artist Shemyakin. Inside, you can find delicacies from all over the world, and even during the Soviet period, it became known as Gastronom No. 1, where people could find delicacies that were rare and hard to find under Soviet suppression. Here you can find sweets, different kinds of meat, caviar, chocolates and Turkish delights, baked goods, cheese. The shop was built in the Art Nouveau style. It is filled with the beautiful decorations from the lamps to the windows to the ceilings. The Emporium has two restaurants that can be reserved for your private party. Each restaurant can hold up to 40 people. of Emporium is a wonderful place to have dinner or luncheon or simply stop for a cup of coffee as you're walking down Nevsky Prospects. Welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Krivchenya here with you and Zara Vince to show you Spas na Krovi, or Church on the Spilt Blood. The Church of the Savior on the Spilt Blood is on Canal Grubayedov. At the exact place of this cathedral was an assassination attempt on his life. 
The first attempt was not successful. He then got out of his carriage, got mad at the assassin, and the second assassin came and blew up himself and mortally wounded the Tsar. After the death of his father, Alexander III commissioned this beautiful cathedral. You'll notice the style of this cathedral is in traditional Russian style. It is not similar to any other cathedrals here in St. Petersburg. It may in fact remind you of the style of St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow. Although commissioned in 1883, it was not until 1907 that the cathedral actually opened. The cathedral has never acted as an actual church. It only served to memorialize the murdered Tsar. No baptisms, weddings, or any other services except for memorials have been performed here. Spasakrovi has had many lives. First it was a memorial, then after the revolution it was looted and became a morgue during the Second World War. After that it became a place for saving potatoes, known as the savior on the potatoes, colloquially. Its last incarnation was as a warehouse for the small opera theater. In 1997, it had a grand reopening after more than 20 years of restoration. All of the mosaics inside are not original as they had been destroyed and stolen during the long period of the Soviet era. As you can see, Spesna Krovi is beautiful on the outside, but it's even more beautiful on the inside with the artist's interpretations of mosaics and icons. It's a must see in your adventure here in St. Petersburg. Zara Vince has a special opportunity to offer you. If you would like, in the evening after the museum has closed, they can create a special event just for your group here at this magical museum. and welcome to Zara Vin's Survival Guide. I'm Maya Krivchenya, your American mezzo-soprano, here to show you one of the most beautiful sites in St. Petersburg, Izakovsky Sabor, or St. Isaac's Cathedral. St. Isaac's Cathedral has a very interesting history. This is not the first time it was built. This is not the second time. This is actually the fourth interpretation of St. Isaac's Cathedral. The first one was made simply from wood and after several years on the embankment of the Neva, sort of rotted away. The second one made from stone didn't last very long either because the banks of the Neva were constantly changing and it kept slipping and falling into the Neva. The third example was done of a mixture of marble and brick, which was not very, mm, shall we say, royal. So finally, Tsar Alexander decided to build this one, the final one you see before you today. The number four also plays a role in this being the fourth largest cathedral in the world with the dome style. So as you can see, this very, very large golden dome on top, which has a hundred tons of gold leaf upon it, is one of the fourth largest in the world. And the number four also plays a role in the 40 years it took to construct St. Isaac's Cathedral. It was a very long construction because the architect was told that he would die soon after its construction. So he drew it out for 40 years, as some say. And of course, a month after its completion, he died. St. Isaac's Cathedral has over 100 columns inside and out that surround the building, hold it up, and are functional. Many of the columns themselves are single pieces of stone. The cupola, or the dome on top, during the Second World War was painted green so that the Germans couldn't find it because a gold shiny dome is quite easy to find. And on some of the outside columns you can still see some scars from World War II where bombs hit the building but were not able to destroy the stone. As you can see, St. Isaac's Cathedral is a beautiful monument in the city of St. Petersburg. It's beautiful outside but it's also extremely gorgeous on the inside. Come, let's have a look. Hi, we are now inside St. Isaac's Cathedral. Behind me you can see a model of how the cathedral was constructed. These columns weighed tons and tons and so mere men could not lift them by themselves. This apparatus helped them put the columns into place. Now if you look around the walls you will see 
Each wall is covered with semi-precious stones, marble, red marble, black slate, pink marble. The floor looks like a checkerboard. All beautiful semi-precious stones fill the hall of St. Isaac's Cathedral. Here you can see a model of the inside of the dome, how it's held together with steel beams to create a beautiful large dome for St. Isaac's Cathedral. Behind me, you can see far down at the end of the hall where the actual sacrament takes place. This cathedral, although it is a museum, it is also a working cathedral as well, and several times per week has um, services for believers of Russian Orthodox Church. Originally, when St. Isaac's was built, the walls were covered with frescoes along with the beautiful stone. But unfortunately, being on a swamp, the frescoes began to peel off the walls. So they were replaced with mosaics, such as this one. The artist commissioned to paint the cupola here, or the dome, is Karl Brilov. This was one of his last works of art that he was commissioned to do. Now, if you will look up at the top of the cupola, you'll notice a bird. It is a dove, and if you stretch out your arms as wide as you possibly can and stand up as tall as you can, that's actually how big the bird is. The cupola is that large. As well, if you stand in the middle of the floor, there's a special spot where if you make a wish there, it will come true. Behind me, you can see the beautiful screen where religious services take place. Here, there are columns of malachite, the green ones. They're not solid stone, but they're composited together. The blue columns made from lapis lazuli also uh, around the doorway of the screen. Here, the icons are done with mosaic and painting. It's a beautiful place to experience a religious service. Tsar events can offer your group an exclusive opportunity to come into this cathedral before there are multitudes of guests. They can have it open early for you and they can also give you the opportunity to have a special concert of children's choirs perform just for your group. An interesting fact is that during the Soviet period this church was closed as a working cathedral and was instead turned into a museum that was anti-religious. They did experiments that people could come and visit and learn about how religion was bad. Tsar events can help you have a wonderful experience within some of the cathedrals here in St. Petersburg. St. Isaac's is one of them, one of the most beautiful, one of the most rich, and one of the most spiritual places you'll find in this city. And welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Kripchenya here with Tsar Vince, welcoming you to a very exciting space for your event. We are here at the Museum of Arcade Games from the Soviet Union. All the games here are originals. Some of them are maybe more than one original put together where they've gathered pieces to make a machine that actually works. Every game that you see is actually from the Soviet Union between the years of 1970 and 1990. While at the museum or having your event here, you can actually even play these games. They are all in working condition. Here at the Arcade Museum, Tsar Vince can help you make a special game evening with a finger food type dinner. Or perhaps you would like to have a Soviet themed party with games and Soviet style food. Another option of course is to include this amazing and fun museum in your scavenger hunt. Let Tsar Vince bring you here to this exciting blast from the past. If you're looking for a more relaxed environment to hold your meeting or conference, here you can also seat up to about 50 people and have a wonderful event with games surrounding you. If you're looking to get away from the high culture and art of St. Petersburg, you can spend the afternoon here in the wonderful Soviet Museum of Arcades.
Hi, and welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Krivchenya, here today at the Railway Museum in St. Petersburg. The Railway Museum is located behind Baltiski Vauxhall, or Baltiski Railroad Station, and uses part of an old railroad station to house locomotives and trains from times past. This new and innovative museum was opened in 2017. It is interactive and is a treat for anybody who loves trains, or is enjoy, enjoys traveling, or just wants to see what it was once like to move around Russia. One of the interesting parts of this museum is that you can go inside some of the train cars and engines. Although many of the engines say, please do not climb on and please do not touch. This one, for example, was the post car. You see example of postmen working inside and bags of post and boxes around you. Here at the Railway Museum, there are over 118 pieces of rolling stock, which you can view from the floor around them, from above on the catwalks, and even go underneath. There are over 35,000 pieces of artifacts from the railroads here in St. Petersburg. If you're interested in trains or love them or their fond memory of your childhood, perhaps you would like to hold your event here at the Russian Railway Museum. You could do an event, gala dinner, perhaps a conference. If trains have been a favorite part of your childhood or you just enjoy going for a ride, the Railway Museum here in St. Petersburg is a wonderful place to explore, touch, see, and feel different parts of the railway and enjoy yourself. If trains are part of your fantasy from childhood, then having an event here would be perfect for you. Hi, and welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide with Tsar Vince. I'm Maya Krivchenya here today at Peter Paul Fortress. Peter Paul Fortress is located on an island called Hare Island in the middle of the Neva River. We can consider this place to be the birthplace of St. Petersburg as it was started in 1703. The building of the fortress began in 1706 and continued until 1740. The design is by Dominique Trezzini. Here within the walls of Peter Paul's Fortress, you can find many, many different buildings. There's, of course, the lovely cathedral, the mint, and, of course, the Russian Bastille, or the prison here on the island. There are also many buildings that have been turned into museums, places to eat, and also souvenir shops. fortress is located on an island, when you're on tour here, you can actually arrive by boat right to the gate of the fortress. And as you can see, we're right in the middle of the Neva, and in the summertime, you'll see the natives of St. Petersburg swimming in the Neva and sunbathing themselves along the fortress walls. In the early spring in St. Petersburg, while the Neva is still covered with ice, you'll find what we call walruses. These are not actual real walruses, they're people who enjoy sunbathing practically in the nude along the walls of the crepes that are warmed by the early spring sun. If you're looking for an exclusive tour of the city, you can jump on a helicopter right from St. Peter Paul Fortress and go for a lovely tour seeing all the sights with a bird's eye view. Within the walls of Peter Paul Fortress is also a very famous prison where political prisoners were held, also writers who were against the regime, and during the revolution it became a place where even czars and members of the royal family were held and executed. If you're looking for a space to hold your gala dinner, here at the Parade Pavilion there's a beautiful indoor and outside facility where you can have a large party for your corporate event. Another wonderful place to sit down and have a bite to eat is at the restaurant Korushka, which is on the other side of the wall of Peter Paul Fortress that looks out to the arrow of Vasilevsky Ostrov.
One of the buildings that still works in its original capacity here at Peter Paul Fortress is the Magnetny Dvor. The mint behind me still man manufactures coins for the Russian Federation today. Here on the square in front of the cathedral and the Magnetny Dvor, often in the summer there are live musical concerts that are open to the public. It's a wonderful place to spend the evening, enjoy the bells of the church and hear live music. When coming to visit St. Petersburg, coming to St. Peter Paul's Fortress is an absolute must. Here you find the beginning of our great city, wonderful museums full of history, art, and interesting artifacts from around the city and around Russia. We hope you enjoy your trip here and perhaps saw our events can make it a special one. Hi, and welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Kravchenya, here with Sara Vince on Nevsky Prospect. Nevsky Prospect starts at the Palace Square and runs all the way to Alexander Nevsky Monastery. On Nevsky, you can find all different kinds of shops, from the most expensive to tourist souvenirs to art galleries. If you want to buy something on Nevsky, you can definitely find it. While you're walking on Nevsky, take a break in one of the wonderful cafes or restaurants all along the promenade. And if you want to go to a museum or a theater or perhaps visit a church, there's some just along Nevsky and many are open doors that you can go right into. Nevsky Prospect is full of interesting places to visit. For example, Gastini Dvor, the National Library of Russia, the beautiful Yeliseev Emporium, Behind me you can see one of the most beautiful buildings on Nevsky Prospect, the Zinger Building. Now it is home to a beautiful bookstore and cafe. There are also lots of monuments to famous people and wars here on Nevsky Prospect. For example, Ekaterina II. And behind her you see the lovely theater, Alexandrsky Theater. Anichkov Bridge with four different horses and four different horsemen. Nevsky Prospect is a beautiful place to walk, look at architecture, enjoy art, see museums, go to theaters, and visit churches. It's a place you absolutely must go to while you're here in St. Petersburg. Hi, and welcome once again to Tsar Vince Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Krivchenya here with you today in front of Kazan Cathedral. You'll notice that the beautiful cathedral behind me looks kind of familiar. It is actually a replica of St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican. This building was built in 1801 until 1811. The name Kazan Cathedral comes from the name of an icon that used to be housed within the cathedral walls. During the Great War with Napoleon, the General Kutuzov came here to pray before the icon and ask for her help in order to beat Napoleon's army. They won the war, and in 1812, this place not only became a place of religion, but also a place of celebration for winning the Great War. This 
Cathedral was the most important cathedral in the city of St. Petersburg until the Sakaski Cathedral was built. After the revolution, this church was turned into a museum of atheism. And then in 1992, services again began here at Kazansky Cathedral. The original icon from Kazan is not here in this cathedral. Here we have a reproduction of the original, which was lost in 1904 when it was stolen and perhaps destroyed. Although this icon is not the original from Constantinople, it has been claimed that it has created many miracles around Russia. During high holidays here, you can see great processions for Christmas and Easter. If you have time while walking down Nevsky Prospect, visiting Kazan Cathedral is an absolute must. and welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Krivchenya here at Kuznetsky Market to show you one of the most famous and delicious markets here in St. Petersburg. Here we are inside of Kuznetsky Market. You can find fresh fruits, vegetables, meats and cheeses all for your home kitchen or perhaps you're from one of the famous restaurants here in St. Petersburg, they get their goods here as well. Fresh food from all around Russia comes here to this market. Perhaps you would like to buy some dairy. Fresh fruit, dried fruit and nuts, fresh meat, vegetables. Exciting experience you can have here is to test your palate with these delicious homemade pickled goods. Grape leaves, garlic, pickles, tomatoes, and cabbage. If you're looking to have an authentic Russian food buying experience, Coming here to Kuznetsky Market is a wonderful time. You can try pickled goods, fresh fruits and vegetables, and try your luck at haggling with the sellers. And welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Kravchenya with Zara Vince here in front of one of St. Petersburg metro stations. Why the metro? Because the metro in St. Petersburg is actually not just a way to get around the city, but it's also a work of art. The St. Petersburg Metro was opened November 15, 1955, and originally only contained one line. These original metro stations are actually works of art and monuments to the early Soviet period. When you enter the metro, you'll notice you need to go a long way down. Some of the trips down the escalators can take between two and five minutes. They also doubled as bomb shelters, as they were built during the Cold War. Riding the metro is a cheap, fast, and inexpensive way to get around the city. You simply buy a token and head down the escalator and jump on a train. The trains go around the center of the city and also to the outskirts of the city as well. The stations added to the metro during the 1970s are not as beautiful as the original stations, but the stations that have been added since the Perestroika are a monument again to what the Russian metro once was. 
you want to jump on a joyride on the metro, don't go during rush hour. This time you'll find it to be very squished and filled with lots of people and it can be quite uncomfortable. So best to skip out during the hours of 8 and 10 in the morning and after work in the evening. Because we live on a swamp here in St. Petersburg, the metro is built so far under the ground. In fact, it's one of the deepest metros in the world. If you're looking for an exciting, fast, beautiful, and historical way to get around the city, jumping on the metro is definitely the way to go. Hi, and welcome once again to Zara Vint's Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Kretchenia, your hostess, American mezzo-soprano, here at the Yusupovsky Palace on the River Moika. This palace is filled with lots of history and interesting tales. The Yusupovsky family was one of the richest families in all of Russia. In fact, they had more money than the Tsars. We're now in the Paradne Komnata. Here is one of the rooms that were public to the people of Yusupovsky's time. Here, the Yusupovsky family would welcome guests and they could listen to music or just enjoy the company of their host. Here we are in the bedroom of the Yusupovsky Palace. Of course, it's one of the private rooms of the family, which you can enjoy during your tour of the Yusupovsky Palace. Now we're in the blue living room. Here you'll notice beautiful blue furniture, silk tapestries on the walls. This furniture and the tapestries are original to the Yusupovsky family. It wasn't damaged during the revolution. This beautiful red living room is also known as the emperor's living room. During the time that the Yusupovs lived here, instead of the mother of the house being on the wall, you had the emperor of Russia. Why a picture of the emperor? Because Yusupov was part of the Russian court. Here in this hall is where the Yusupovsky children would learn to dance. You'll notice the rails along the side of the hall, along with the mirrors, where the children could practice their dance moves. Here we are in the white column ballroom, with windows looking out onto the moika. Now, this ballroom has very many interesting features. For example, take a look please at our beautiful chandeliers. Of course, one would think that chandeliers are made of metal and glass, and wood, but these ones are actually specially made of paper mache so as not to disturb the acoustics of the room during concerts. This beautiful green hall used to be the exhibition hall of the Yusupovsky Palace. Here, more than 1,200 paintings were hung. Of course, during the revolution, many of them were stolen, and what was left was then taken over by the Hermitage Museum. We are now at the entrance of the private theater in the Yusupovsky Palace. What palace doesn't need its own special theater? Here we are inside the private theater of the Yusupovsky Palace. You'll notice that it's very proportional with the stage and parterre. Here you can seat 120 people. On the second levels you can add up to 170. In front of me is the prince's private box. And to my left, is a secret box for the emperor in case he wants to see the opera but doesn't want anybody to see him. Here we are in the wooden living room in the Yusupovsky Palace. It was often used by the Yusupovs for a dining room and the food was brought to the room up on a dumb waiter. The wood in this room is oak. You'll notice the oak paneling on the walls, the ceiling. It's quite a lovely composition. And in fact, the chandelier is also made from wood. On the table, you'll notice the legs and some of the chairs, some elements from the family shield of the Yusupovs. In Yusupovsky Palace, there are some special rooms that deal with the history of Rasputin. 
He was a friend of the Tsar and the Tsar's wife, and he was murdered here within the walls of this palace. Here in the basement of the Yusupovsky Palace is where the murder of Rasputin took place. First it started with poisoned wine and sweets, which didn't actually work, so then they shot him, and then they put him in a bag and threw him in the moika. When you visit St. Petersburg, you absolutely must visit Yusupovsky Palace. It's one of the most beautiful palaces within the city that has wonderful interiors that have been redone and also original. Welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide, presented to you by Zara Vince. I'm your hostess, Maya Kripchenya, here at Vladimir's Palace. Vladimir's Palace is a beautiful 19th century palace on the embankment of the River Neva. It was built in 1867 to 72, and here lived the Grand Duke Vladimir Alexandrovich. This is another lovely staircase in Vladimir's palace. It was not original to the form, but was added after he married his wife, Maria. She decided to have some renovation work done, so she hired a wonderful architect named Messenmacher. As you can see, the staircase itself is quite beautiful in marble and bronze up the side, and the beautiful lamps were a gift from her mother-in-law. This beautiful room with a marble fireplace and wood paneling is the original family dining room. Here we are in the Raspberry Salon. This room was used by the prince and his wife to invite guests and artists of all different types. Many famous composers such as Rachmaninoff and Rimsky-Korsakov performed their music here. You will also notice on the wall there are beautiful paintings. Prince Vladimir loved the arts. He was actually in fact the president of the Academy of the Arts. He had many, many, many famous paintings in his house. In fact, there are around 60 pieces that came from his house that are now in museums around Russia and the world. This beautiful chandelier in the middle of the hall has come all the way from Italy. It is made from Murano glass from the Murano factory in Venice. Here in this white and gold room sat the wonderful composer Rachmaninoff and sang the amazing bass shellapin. This is the very instrument that they used. Vladimir's palace is known for its mix of styles. There's French, there's Rococo, there's Russian Revival, and here you see beautiful Byzantine style in this lovely room. When Maria married into the family, she decided that the house needed some adjustments. One of the things she added was this beautiful winter garden. Here we are in the white grand ballroom. It is decorated in the Rococo style with gold cherubs and nymphs flying around the ceiling as if in a dance themselves. Here you can just imagine musicians and people in lovely dresses having a gay old time. You can just imagine people dancing around in beautiful dresses and having a wonderful time in this hall. Here we are in the Oak Hall. On the walls of this hall there are Skazki, or fairy tales, painted onto large pieces of canvas that make the hall feel as if you're back in time in a different era in Russia.
and welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Krivchenya here with Tsar Events to show you another interesting view of the city. If you're looking for a wonderful view of the city, the river and the surrounding area, one should go to the top of the crepist and look around on the battlements. If you're looking for some of the best views of the center of St. Petersburg, then come with me and walk along the fortress walls. Here on the walls of Peter Paul Fortress, we have a wonderful view of the center of the city. Behind me, you'll see the arrow of Vasilevsky Ostrov, and there the large cranes are the ports of the city. Also over behind me, you'll see the beautiful gold dome, and that is Isakovsky Cathedral, where we visited before. The green long building is the Hermitage. This is the palace embankment all along here, right in front of the fortress. Unfortunately, under construction, we have uh, Church of the Spilt Blood, but you can see one of the Golden Domes and two of the colorful ones. And then here we also have the Marble Palace and the Summer Gardens. So many beautiful things to see. Of course, today it's a little bit cold and windy, but in the summertime, it's an especially beautiful view. Behind me is the lovely flag tower of St. Peter Paul Fortress. Within the walls, you could have a small reception, a dinner, a cocktail for a group of about 20 people. While here at Peter Paul Fortress, let Tsar Events create a special event for you atop the walls. Welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Krivchenya here in the historical city center of St. Petersburg. We're in the part of town where the wonderful writer Dostoevsky lived. Here beside me, we have a monument to one of his most famous characters from his book, Crime and Punishment. And in fact, this is the very house that he wrote about where Raskolnikov lived. And in fact, Dostoevsky's own house was just a block away from this place. Today, not only will you see the beautiful historic facades of buildings, but new and modern, exciting and hip insides of creative spaces where the young and exciting people of St. Petersburg meet. Here we are in the Berngold Center, or Bernhold Center if you prefer the English name. This place was once a place that made typesetting for printing presses. Now it's a new modern art space, exciting for young and old. Here in this space you can find many exciting and different activities to do. There are master classes, there are studios of master artists, there are shops, there are interesting restaurants, bars, there's even a bar all the way up at the top of the stairs if you like high spaces. On the weekends, if you're interested in live music, here on Friday and Saturday evenings, there's usually a different band every night, and they sit up above you in the balcony. On Saturday and Sunday, you can also find an arts and crafts market, where artists and designers themselves are here presenting their works of art for the public to buy. Zara Vince recommends the Bernhold Center not only as a fun place to hang out, have a coffee or a beer, or go to different designers, but also as a place to use in a scavenger hunt. Or maybe you want to see what the young people are doing in St. Petersburg. This is it. This is the place to be.
Hi, and welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide, presented to you by Zara Vince. I'm your hostess, Maya Kripchenya, here at Vladimir's Palace. Vladimir's Palace is a beautiful 19th century palace on the embankment of the River Neva. It was built in 1867 to 72, and here lived the Grand Duke Vladimir Alexandrovich. This is another lovely staircase in Vladimir's palace. It was not original to the form, but was added after he married his wife, Maria. She decided to have some renovation work done, so she hired a wonderful architect named Messenmacher. As you can see, the staircase itself is quite beautiful in marble and bronze up the side, and the beautiful lamps were a gift from her mother-in-law. This beautiful room with a marble fireplace and wood paneling is the original family dining room. Here we are in the Raspberry Salon. This room was used by the prince and his wife to invite guests and artists of all different types. Many famous composers, such as Rachmaninoff and Rimsky-Korsakov, performed their music here. You will also notice on the wall there are beautiful paintings. Prince Vladimir loved the arts. He was actually, in fact, the president of the Academy of the Arts. He had many, many, many famous paintings in his house. In fact, there are around 60 pieces that came from his house that are now in museums around Russia and the world. This beautiful chandelier in the middle of the hall has come all the way from Italy. It is made from Murano glass from the Murano factory in Venice. Here in this white and gold room sat the wonderful composer Rachmaninoff and sang the amazing bass Shalapin. This is the very instrument that they used. Vladimir's palace is known for its mix of styles. There's French, there's Rococo, there's Russian Revival, and here you see beautiful Byzantine style in this lovely room. When Maria married into the family, she decided that the house needed some adjustments. One of the things she added was this beautiful winter garden. Here we are in the white grand ballroom. It is decorated in the Rococo style with gold cherubs and nymphs flying around the ceiling as if in a dance themselves. Here you can just imagine musicians and people in lovely dresses having a gay old time. You can just imagine people dancing around in beautiful dresses and having a wonderful time in this hall. Here we are in the Oak Hall. On the walls of this hall there are Skazki, or fairy tales, painted onto large pieces of canvas that make the hall feel as if you're back in time in a different era in Russia. Welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide with Zara Events. I'm Maya Kruvchenya here on top of the walls of Peter Paul's Fortress to tell you about an exclusive experience you can have while you're visiting. If you so wish, at the 12 o'clock hour every day, we shoot off one of the cannons behind me. Now, if you're interested in something like this, you yourself could actually light the cannon and fire it yourself at noon. This is a very exclusive event, and not only do you get the uh, pleasure of lighting the cannon, you also get to take home the used shell with you. So you have made a new memory and you also have an exciting souvenir.
Hi, welcome once again to Zara Vent's Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Kriptinia, your American singer, here to present you with a new and exciting venue for your event. We're in a new modern art space called Palma. Here, during the 19th century, the Germans sort of had a collective arrangement where artists and merchants would work together. Now the space has been turned into shops, restaurants, and a great space to hold your event. Here you can see we're preparing for a gala dinner. This hall right now is set up for 160 people, but event can hold up to 200. Palma is an excellent place to hold your event, from fashion shows to conferences to gala dinners. In this modern yet historic space, Czar Events can help you create anything. Hi, and welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide by Zara Vince. I'm Maya Kripchenya, your American soprano, here to show you a very secret place in the heart of St. Petersburg. Come inside with me, and I will bring you to the Book Chapel. Here we have a private book collection of rare and historical books that you may only find here in St. Petersburg. Many of them come from before the revolution and date all the way back to the 16th century. Here you will see books made from facsimiles of originals where you may actually touch the pages, flip through and feel yourself part of a different time. As you can see, the hall is decorated in the Gothic style. Perhaps it reminds you of a time when monks would sit by day copying out precious books by hand. The book chapel has over six thousand different books and here you can even go into secret rooms to enjoy books that many Russians don't even know about. Here we are in the map room where you can enjoy flipping through books of atlases and paintings of a bygone era. Sit in one of these wonderful chairs with the name of an explorer on the back and you will feel yourself an adventurer and explorer to the new world or to different parts of Russia. Wherever you wish to go, you may open a book here and find yourself in that place. For example, there are many beautiful pictures of old St. Petersburg that you can find in some of the books here that are painted with watercolor. You may see the city as it looked hundreds of years ago, a hundred years ago, and imagine yourself in a time before. are in the knight's reading room. You find the decorations similar to those that you would find in a gothic castle, with a warm fireplace, comfy chairs, and a round table to enjoy your reading time. Here you can also have different sort of events, perhaps an intimate meeting, some team building, perhaps also a scavenger hunt where you go through the rooms and have different tours, and at the end, find some great adventurous surprise. Zara Events can bring you to this wonderful, exclusive book chapel where you can open books and take yourself to new and wonderful places. They can help you organize events and maybe something special just for you here amongst the books.
Hi, and welcome to Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Kryptenia here with Zara Vince today at a beautiful place to hold your event. Here we are at Trubitskoy Narishkin Dvoryets. This palace has lived many different lives. In fact, the first owner of part of the palace was Pushkin's great-grandfather. Later in the 18th century, two buildings were combined together to have the palace that we have today. The palace passed between different families and then during the Soviet period was turned into apartment blocks. In 2012, renovations were done to return the palace to a more grand look and they found an amazing amount of treasure from the Tsarist era. Since its renovation, the palace has been turned into a space to hold different kinds of events. Many different rooms, sizes and styles. You can hold your event here, whether it's a large one or a small one. Here we are in the largest hall of the palace where you can seat up to 80 people for dinner. It's a beautiful space with painted ceilings and great ambiance. In this charming hall, you can fit around 60 people for a sit-down dinner. In this charming hall, known as the Mir Hall, you can have a sit-down dinner of up to 70 people. Here at the Trubetskoy Narishkin Palace, Zara Vans can create for your party a wonderful event within one of the many rooms here at this palace. and welcome once again to Zara Vint's Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Kripchenia, your American mezzo-soprano, here to present you with another magical room from Vladimirsky Dvoryets. Here we are in the Oak Hall. As you can see, this hall can be set up for any different kind of event. We are currently preparing for a lovely buffet dinner. On the walls of this hall, there are skazki, or fairy tales, painted onto large pieces of canvas that make the hall feel as if you're back in time in a different era in Russia. If you come with me to the end of the hall, you'll notice a beautiful kamin. You'll notice that this hall has a traditional style Russian stove, or kamin. It was used to heat the entire room. It's actually quite beautiful, done with individual tiles. In this hall, we can have a seated dinner of 100 people or a cocktail hour of 130 people. In such a beautiful hall with walls covered in fairy tales, you're bound to have a magical event. I'm Maya Kripchenia. Welcome again to Russian Survival Guide by Zara Vince. We are here at Safe Kabul, which used to be a cable factory. And the other part of the space has been turned into a place for people to come, hang out, enjoy food, art, music, and have lots of fun. Here we are inside one of the mini pavilions here at Safe Kabul Ports. You can see this is a wonderful space, a large open space where you can hold any event, conference, gala dinners, any sort of event you would like to take place can be made here in this building. Currently in this hall, there's a beautiful exhibition of St. Petersburg history and architecture, where you can have lectures and conferences on this subject. Safe 
Table Port is an open public space where you can treat your palate to flavors from all over the world. This place has restaurants full of street food from Mexico to Georgia to China to Korea. And not only street food, but even more upscale restaurants too, if your palate so prefers. Above these delicious restaurants, you'll find the offices and studios of modern and famous Russian artists and musicians, pop stars, people doing new things in the art world here in St. Petersburg. Here we are in the biggest workshop of this complex of buildings. Here you could hold an award ceremony, a fashion show. In the winter, they even build here a small winter market. It's also an excellent space for live concerts. Here we are at my favorite spot of Safe Cable Ports art space, the embankment. Behind me, you see the newly completed Ring Road suspension bridge. To my left, the ferry passenger port. And to my right, across the river, the port of St. Petersburg. On the embankment, you can have the perfect summer barbecue, enjoy a summer sunset, and watch the river float by. Hi, and welcome to Zarevin's Russian Survival Guide. I am your host, Maya Krivchenya, American singer here at Tavritsky Dvoryets. This palace was originally built by one of Catherine the Great's lovers, Petyomkin. Now, after he died, Catherine the Great then bought this palace to turn it into her summer house in St. Petersburg. This beautiful rotundra has one of the largest domes in St. Petersburg. After Catherine the Great's death, her son, Pavel I, hated everything that she loved. The palace was originally decorated in great splendor. He decided to turn it into a barracks for his favorite cavalry. In the 19th century, the palace was refurbished and used for a home for minor royalty, as well as for grand balls and exhibitions. Then, in 1906, the palace was taken over and used for the first parliament in Russia. Since the 1990s, the Commonwealth of Independent States has held their meetings here. Tsar Vince has the ability to use this beautiful palace for conferences and events. Here we are in Catherine's Hall. This hall can hold up to 1,000 people. It's a beautiful space to hold a gala dinner or a conference if it's such a big party. As you probably guessed by the size of this large room, it was traditionally used as a ballroom. This hall now acts as the antechamber to the parliament room. Here is a great place to hold a welcome cocktail before you begin your conference. We are now in the Congressional Hall. Here is a wonderful place to hold a conference or a meeting that can seat up to 600 people. This is where the first Russian Congress was held in 1906. We hope you've enjoyed this brief look into this gorgeous palace. As usual, Zarvins is able to build for you here a wonderful event, conference, gala dinner, or even just a cocktail hour. We hope you join us here at Tavritsky Dvoryets.
and welcome once again to Russian Survival Guide. I'm Maya Kuchenya, your opera singer from America, here with Tsar Vince to present to you another place to hold your grand event in St. Petersburg. This is Begrov's Palace. This palace was built in the 18th century by the artist and architect himself. It then went on to become a bank in the 19th century, and during the Soviet era, it was a cafeteria. Since the Perestroika, it has had many different uses. It's been a bank again, it's been a bookstore, it's been a clothing store. Now it's an amazing space to hold your grand event. Here we are in the old bank vault of this building. You'll see behind me this lovely metal wall. It's actually original to the building. In fact, the revolutionaries couldn't bust the bank to pieces and these walls remained behind. This amazing vault is one option for your welcome reception. Now I would like to show you our second option for your welcome reception. Come with me. Here along the front of the building, we have a gallery of rooms that connect one to the other where you can hold a beautiful welcome reception. You'll notice the walls are new, but the ceilings are original. Here we are in the grand ballroom of the palace. You'll notice the marble floors, the beautiful natural light, and the national monument of the ceilings. And the ceilings which have been recognized as a national monument and are under the protection of the government. In this hall, we can seat up to 350 people for a sit-down dinner or a standing reception of around 400 people. The hall is gorgeous and you can have any event here that would be suitable for you. Maybe a conference or something else, an exhibition perhaps. Let Zara events take you to this magical place. Hi, I'm Maya Krivchenia, your American Metro Soprano, here for Zara Vince showing you today the Usubisky Palace. When you have your conference or special event, you can come here to the Usubisky Palace and enter this grand marble staircase to start off your exciting evening. When you have your event here, you also get to include a tour if you would like. We begin here in the Paradna Komnata. Here the Yusupa family would welcome their guests. You may enjoy a concert perhaps as you walk through on a tour of the palace just for you. Here we are in the bedroom of the Yusupaski Palace. Of course, it's a private room of the family and it's one of the rooms you can enjoy a walk through on the tour of the palace before your event. Here in the dance hall of the Yusupaski Palace, you can also have a wonderful event. You can seat up to 100 people in this room with a beautiful ceiling, ordinate decorations, and have a wonderful event. Here we are in the white column ballroom with windows looking out onto the moika. Here you may hold a party for up to 150 people or perhaps a presentation as well. Now, this ballroom has very many interesting features. For example, take a look please at our beautiful chandeliers. Of course, one would think that chandeliers are made of metal and glass and wood, but these ones are actually specially made of paper mache so as not to disturb the acoustics of the room during concerts. In this beautiful green hall, you can enjoy a party of up to 100 people. This hall was used for the exhibitions of the Yusupovsky Palace. If you wish for your event, you can have here a small concert or perhaps a small ballet with one or two performers. You could also use this hall as a convention hall and have a meeting here if you so wish. Remember, the hall seats about 170 people with 120 on the floor. In this lovely hall called the Mir Hall, 
You can have a reception of up to 70 people and a dinner for 50. Yusubovsky Palace is one of the most beautiful Saint palaces in St. Petersburg. Here is an amazing place to hold your event. From the grand staircase to the private theater to the large ballroom, any event here, Tsar events can make very special.